live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone, live in Las Vegas for HP Discover, our three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, The Cube. Our flagship program, we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Casey Choi, Global Solutions Architect and Engineering, uh, Global Sales, with all the customers uh, here to share with us the data from the field. <laughs> Welcome to theCUBE. Hey, great. Hey, thanks, Dave, John, I appreciate it. You know, we love doing the Cube interviews. Yep. One of the most fun segments are talking to customers and our people close to the action. Mm -hmm. You're close to the customers, you're close to all the action. Uh, in this transformation, I mean, customers have been road mapping out and looking at the past five years, they saw cloud, they see what Amazon's doing, they see the cloud stuff, they obviously see mobile every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so up and down the stack is huge change. Mm -hmm. Sure. So we want, I want to focus in on where the levers are. Mm -hmm. Where do you see with customers the, the, the main innovation levers or uh, technology enablers? Is it cloud, is it big data, all of the above? Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your view there and what are you hearing from your customers? Yeah, so it's, it's a great question. Uh, and, and I think the first place I, I'd start on that, right, is I think we have to realize that, you know, for the first time probably in recorded history, right, we have a confluence of these things happening, right? I think, especially in IT, we're, we're kind of used to seeing kind of linearity around things that hit us. You know, it might be web, or yeah. it might be social, or it might be these sorts of things. But for the first time, we kind of have a perfect storm sort of a situation occurring, right? With What's happening with mobility? What's and happening, it's happening with data? Fast. It's happening fast. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's non-linear <laughs> and it's all correlated, right? So yeah. uh, first and foremost, I think it's a very challenging environment for IT organizations, especially those that are more traditional in nature. So I'll absolutely reinforce that. And I think, uh, you know, if you talk about technology levers and what's there, I, I think there's a couple of things. I mean, uh, that, that that we certainly see as uh, a characteristic of those that are, you know, capitalizing on this first. I think. First and foremost, it's, it's those organizations that realize that all of these things are happening versus I'm going to attack these things serially. Uh, case in point, for example, if you look at what's happening around security, security in and of itself is becoming a big data analytic problem, right? You can't no longer handle security with a bunch of folks in looking for screens, looking for action, looking for activities like that. So um, I think key levers for us right now are really in what I would call uh, what's happening on the application side and certainly big changes around the velocity and the quantity of applications with the quality still you know, being a, a key component of that. And then the second aspect is really the ability to you know, analyze and make meaning of a you know, large volume of information that is being uh, you know, ingested into the organization. So, the lever points are really there. You know, whatever and, technology and you then use, compute's you know, not so going down. I mean, there's no. more and more compute coming on the scene. Yeah. more storage needed, faster yeah. storage. So, like, there's yeah. an engine of hard like infrastructure. Yeah, and then yeah. the apps are under a lot of pressure to go faster and be more robust. Well, I think what's happening on apps, and I think everything centers back on the application, right? And uh, whether you talk about agile or DevOps or whatever terminology you want to use, uh, the, the fact of the matter is the velocity of the application is driven by demand, and that demand yeah. could be mobility, it could be uh, in the area of social, whatever you want to look at. They're line of business driven. Uh, the business has gotten very used to a application cycle that is much more frequent. Uh, uh, which has a much higher velocity than what we've been used to. And uh, you know, that pressure is, is, is felt throughout the entire ecosystem, whether you're talking infrastructure data. Uh, so I got to ask you though, are businesses yeah. used to it? Are they getting comfortable with that? Or are they getting f sort of forced in that direction? Yeah. Because right? most customers <laughs> I would say that we talk to yeah. aren't there yet. I mean. I in, think it's a forcing function and I think there are certainly leaders in that. Uh, what we're also seeing is more traditional uh, industries mm -hmm. and traditional companies adopting, and I'm seeing this kind of a, uh, really the tip of the iceberg on this, really adopting architectures and uh, methodologies that you wouldn't normally find in a traditional, let's say an insurance company or a financial services organization or a retailer uh, who might be you know, a little bit more conservative. Uh, they're not going to be a web scale property, but now what we're starting to see is they're adopting the things that have been taught to them by organizations that are digital native, right? Or have, have, have really no, none of the vestiges of the, uh, of the old yeah. style of IT. So, that combination, that, that traditional you know, middle point is, is really where I think the, the, the key uh, battlegrounds are, right? Is how do you take more traditional transactional systems of record businesses and combine them effectively with what we're starting to see on systems of engagement. So the born in the, the cloud digital native guys yeah. have, they don't have the legacy, right? right. And, yeah. and you know, they don't have the profits either, but, but yeah. they're not measured by the same right. you know, right. KPIs. So 
but then you get the, 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 the large insurance companies, you mentioned financial services, manufacturers, 90% of their application portfolio is, is that legacy. So right. how do you help them sort of transition from point A, where they are today, to where they want to be? Yeah, I think you look for good bridge points, right? In, in, into uh, the organization, uh, taking into account things like uh, the, the tolerance of the organization for the speed, and then skill sets, right? Uh, that, that's kind of the other kind of underrated part of this is, uh, it's one thing to have the technology, it's a wholly different thing to have the experience and really the, uh, the capacity to do this from a skill set perspective. But I think what you look for is, you know, where are those opportunities to, to really leverage uh, competencies you already have? So, you know, case in point, uh, you know, a lot of organizations have built up deep competencies in, you know, what I would call mode one stuff. So let's take SQL for example, right? Um, there's a lot of good bridging capability that you can use to take that SQL native language and you know, use it for non-SQL or these upcoming you know, Hadoop-based environments or Cassandra or SQL type environments. It's right? the killer app for Hadoop so, yeah, so you look, so, you, so you look for that, right? <laughs> so, uh, and you know, we've got some of that within our product sets like Invertica and you know, yeah, we pay a lot of sure. attention to those, those connectors or those, or those bridges. So um, you know, what I really look for and try to advise on is really to, to try to find those, those points where you, know, you can take uh, native tongues right, and, and learn a second language uh, quickly around that. So mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you don't want to go from uh, English to Chinese, but English to Italian might be a little easier, right? So you look for those sorts of uh, you know, what I would call phonetic bridges and, and kind of build upon that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Casey, I got to ask you about social yep. um, business, um, new style of business. People are all connected with mobile phones. That, that sure. cat's out of the bag, it's genie's out of the bottle. Yeah. Deal, no matter what people say. There's new dynamics that puts new pressure. So we hear about things like API economy, notification, more and more data is coming in from a threat standpoint. So right. the consumer experience has changed significantly. Mm -hmm. And there's been startups come out of the woodwork, new ideas get exploited and mm -hmm. driven, grown fast in the cloud. That speaks to sure. this whole new era. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at what's powering all that, infrastructure, it's the software, it's the DevOps, it's the orchestration, it's all that operating system-like software that right. makes it all happen, right. horizontally and vertically scalable. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you, quiz my question. With all this replatforming discussion that you hear in Silicon Valley, and uh, we're replatforming the enterprise, we're going to flatten that out. Right, right. It's kind of a buzzword, but it means something. It means that we're changing the platform yeah. bedrock to enable more agile, real-time, new stuff. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you, from an enterprise standpoint, what does that replatforming mean? Because that is the shift to this new style of business where mm -hmm. you see some of the stuff happening on the consumer business, not just I have a mobile phone, I want to run apps with APIs. Yeah. It's a completely mindset shift on how to architect right. with legacy right. stuff right. <laughs> you know, and personnel. So what yeah. does replatforming mean to, to an enterprise architect or a CIO or CFO or CEO? Yeah, uh, you know, it's a good question, John. I think uh, I think the term takes on different meanings. You know, I just heard a presentation the other day by IDC. They call it the third platform, right? right? And the third platform is this combination yeah. of, of things. I think, though, in most of the organizations we deal with, unless you're you know web native or digital native, right, or cloud native uh, businesses, you still have to deal with the fact that you've got a long history of customer information files, transactional records, all those things that need to be integrated. Um, and they're at different speeds, right? And uh, so I think the first realization is understanding that they are at different speeds, and in many cases they're going to require uh, different sets of architectures uh, that will be, you know, best tuned or optimized for that particular. Right? Time is the, uh, the equalizing factor in all of that. So again, back to, you know, most of the organizations we deal with, it, it really has to do with, um, you know, what are the things that you can help us with to kind of bridge old to new. I don't want to throw it all away. I can't throw it all away from a compliancy perspective. I've got a lot right, of money. They don't want to take down. They don't want to take it down. So hardware, you know, like, we look for know. specific things that are yeah. are going to allow for that uh, for that um, that that composable capability within that business. A uh, case in point. It's a building blocks mentality. Building blocks. I mean, things like yeah. uh, you know, container technologies or container methodologies are really hot these days, right? The ability to again kind of carry forward things that I've already been doing do them in a new way, uh, operationalize them for a different velocity, for a different sort of, 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 of deployment model. And so we're seeing a lot of interest in that. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest in things like, you know, software-defined infrastructure, programmable infrastructure, you know. The days of buying something that was yeah. purpose-built to do one thing is no longer, and now you want to have something that will, you know, redefine itself based it, on the load. I find it interesting, uh, you know, it's yeah. an interesting uh, thing that we look at is whole replatforming, it's just a buzzword, but yeah. the themes are all the same. Mm -hmm. I need to be prepared for change fast. Right. So the Lego block, building blocks, SOA, composable, sure. mm -hmm. DevOps, it, it's, 
know. It's, it, it flies in my mind. I, that hangs right. together. I have no problem with that. And I love it because it's, it's also leverage from a cost perspective. Yeah. No one wants to drop their compute and storage down. They want to actually increase performance, lower cost, and do all this it, stuff. John, I mean, it never goes on. down, frankly. It I mean, the, the idea of scaling back, I mean, it's yeah. a nice concept, but I, honestly, I really haven't seen much of that unless you're going out of business fast, which, yeah. you know, you don't, you know, it really doesn't matter at that but point. But look at right? containers, right? So they, I interviewed yep. the uh, CEO of Docker yep. two mm -hmm. years ago. And they weren't, didn't have any outside funding. Well, they were repivoting into their new thing. Yeah. And uh, Solomon, yeah, we get this open source project. And sure, then within sure. a year, mm -hmm. that's how fast the native apps started to explode. Yeah. It was almost like a pressure cooker, just the timing of Docker. Yeah. Containers have been around. We Containers have been around a while, right? Yeah. But, but the timing yeah. of that. Yeah. I think of it, and I think it's the open source nature of it. I mean, look at what's happening in cloud, and what, we, what what's happening around things like OpenStack, right? It yeah. once once that gets out into the community, and you get that force of nature starting to happen, and again, driven by a you know, because not one company is going to be able to do yeah. it all, right? But you get that developer community, the open source community, active on it, and I think that's what really was was the kicker on this, right? It's something a concept that's been around a long time, but now right. it's got mass. So I'm I'm a, I'm a customer. Pretend I'm a customer for a minute. Okay, I'm scared. Yep. That kind of speed radically shifts how I have to do business. I could get fired, I, had, I might have made an investment, yep. I mean, there's a huge amount of cognitive dissonance I might have. So that's the pressure I'm under. I have all the pressure from the business units, not just to run IT, but like to actually drive top line revenue. Yeah. I got these yeah. workloads, I got new apps coming, and now I know native apps. So all this change is making me scared. How do you prepare, how do you talk to me as a customer or are those kinds of customers? I don't mean scared as in like a wimpy kind of way. I mean yeah, like, yeah. I mean like the re their reality is there's <coughs> yeah. a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of skis. risk. There's a lot of new things, right? Let, let's face it, even for us, there's a lot of new things there. Um, you know, it's a great question and, and, and maybe the way I'll answer it is, I, I think what you look for is uh, what are your fast success points, right? We all hear about fast fail. Uh, I look for from an advisory perspective, what are the things that we can get done that show uh, strong progressive capability? Uh, have strong return on investment or business outcome valuation versus let's say doing that next upgrade, right? Or doing that next thing IT for IT's sake. So um, I, I would say the key aspect here is, you know, look for those things that have measurable impact. Even though it may not be the biggest project, uh, let's look for those things and that can iterate and build on each other. So again, we talked a little bit about it earlier in, in the discussion, right? I'm, you know, looking for things that are bridge things to the next era, and then look for outside help. You know, look for look for counsel, look for those things that have already gone before you, right? And utilize that as much as you possibly can. Reference architecture, success stories, outcomes, and uh, you know, we we can help there, right? So I think that's one of the things that, that we try to leverage. As Do you much see? As we can. Uh, I mean, what's the bell curve look like? Yeah. See, so I see a lot of customers a lot. There's a handful mm -hmm. that really are driving for change. There's top-down leadership. Uh, they're, they're forcing essentially their people to get comfortable with change. Mm -hmm. This is the way it is today. It's going to change. Get yeah. comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, we're going to go from a situation, you talked about insurance before, yeah. where they would roll out a new app, take a year mm -hmm. longer to roll out a new app. Now they're conceiving an application on Monday and it's out you know, in 10 days. Right, right. Um, so there's that sort of classic customer and then in the fat middle, it's sort of confusion, and then there's the sort of hanging on to the past. Yeah. What do you see in the, as, as that bell curve? Are, what percent of the customers, you know, gut feel, yeah. are really in a position to take advantage of, of these changes? And, and how can HP yeah. accelerate that? I think, I think like with any sort of uh, tumultuous change like this, you know, you are going to have a natural distribution of this. Uh, I would say the, you know, so it's going to follow, you know, a traditional bell curve, early yeah. adopters, middle. I think though what, what we're starting to see more and more of is the middle has access to things that you know traditionally, let's say 10 years ago, uh, was really off limits, right? Or it was hard to find. Now it's very pervasive, whether it be you know SaaS or you know you're you're, you're building you know pass capability or preformed applications, whatever it might be. So I actually see an, an interesting dynamic happening here, right? Which I think uh, whereas before you had these organizations that had deep resources, deep pockets, deep capability. I actually see the, the, the curve shifting a little bit more to the right, uh, at least in the sense that I think the accessibility to what's out there uh, in terms of the pervasiveness of the expertise, preformed applications, preformed tools, and again, you know, you, you've you got the ability of spinning up things a heck of a lot quicker than where we were before. So the barriers to entry for that are lower now, so in that sense, I, I think I do see more innovation coming from more of that fat center, if you will. And uh, if, you, if you look at what's starting to happen is, um, you know, you're, you're not only seeing a lot of great startup activity, but you're seeing traditional businesses 
you know, realizing and taking a lead and, and starting to you know, really get a handle around how do I run at a different speed. And as that realization around that, that second piece comes into play, I, I actually see a lot more activity there than, than what we've traditionally have focused on with so more that's leaders. Particularly, yeah. there's another segmentation which is you know, yeah. size of company. Like the, your, yeah. your point being, smaller, mid-sized companies who didn't have yeah. the resources before and now have access to them, that underscores the yeah. imperative for the larger companies who might be sitting back saying, yeah. well, hey, stock price is up, we're making tons of dough, yeah. we're throwing off a lot of cash. And, and, and what's really interesting about this, Dave, is uh, you find companies that, uh, again, you know, I'm not going to name names here, but organizations where you go, all of a sudden, they're in a business that is a really strong adjacency, but maybe two years ago, they weren't doing it all. You know, So like an insurance company, you know, a couple of years ago, we were talking about process efficiency, right? How do I get claims paid quicker? How do I reduce my cost on that? How do I get my EOB statement to look better? You know, yeah, these right. sorts of things. And now all of a sudden, you've got organizations that are like, whoa, wait a minute here. We've got historical data. We've got intellectual property. We've got trend analytics. We've got these things that can be repurposed in a way that takes us into a business vector that is completely different from, from what we were saying. And again, these are happening you know, in organizations that realize that, hey, it, it's a different business, but it's, it's really adjacent to what we've been doing, right? And, and now what they've set themselves up for is a very, very, again, different velocity model for that. And again, it's been exciting to work with those because uh, they're coming from all sectors, but again, I would say we're starting to see a, a lot of, you, know, you, you always look for the you know, startups at, at this end, and then you've got the established companies, but I'm actually really bullish on what we're what we're starting to see from. Well, from and that even middle. if even if historically that company had the, the the data and even the tools to analyze that data, yeah. their approach would have been okay. Let's order some servers. Right. Let's order some storage. Let's wait. Yeah. Let's have you know a, a development throw the yeah. the code over the fence to the infrastructure guys. Yeah. That's changing. It's totally changing. Now you consume it as a service, right? And you can consume it in the way that you want to buy and pay for it, right? And we're seeing that across the entire service uh, spectrum. It, it shouldn't be any different with what we're seeing in, uh, in information services and uh, you know, outcome-based services and so forth. So it doesn't surprise me at all. And again, uh, the way that the procurement is happening, right? And, and how it wants to be procured and the business model for it, uh, it's as different as the technology changing under it. You know, who would have thought that you know uh, spinning media was going to start to go out of vogue within you know literally a year, year and a half, and yeah. it is, yeah. right? Um, and so it, it's 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 glad you're saying next spinning disc. Glad you're saying that. A lot, <laughs> a lot of people don't don't realize HP is one of the few companies who is sort of putting forth this vision of an all flash data. Center yeah, exactly. As right. an example, yeah. so yeah. you're not protecting the the past from the future, which is yeah, great. I, I think you got managed for somebody coming up, you know, afterwards. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. it's. it's yeah. Uh, it's good to see that, and again, I think we've taken a kind of a visionary lead there because, it, you know, and, and honestly, it, it doesn't take a lot to figure out that, you know, getting things to go faster, like having an all-flash data center, that's a good thing, right? And when everything, like I said, where speed is a common denominator, it's a, yeah. it's a major factor. And obviously so. that low latency feeds into the whole API mobile yeah. piece. Yeah, uh, right. So Casey, my final question for you before we break on the segment is, yeah, John. Love, love your energy and vision because we agree the confluence mm -hmm. and first time in history kind of sound yeah. by, that's exactly what's happening in many areas. One thing that's a first time in history moment that's going on now that we didn't talk about, I want to get your thoughts to close the segment is, yeah. for the first time in the history of modern business in the world, you can actually measure everything. That's Technically, true. Technically, in theory. That's true. You could actually yeah. instrument your entire business end to end. Absolutely. Not yeah. like even yeah. advertising. Yeah. And yeah. mobile devices. Right. The endpoints are changing. The internet of right. things. So right. this is kind of a I mean I mean that's profound that if you think about it, yeah. you could actually measure everything. So it's not so much the data, it's what to do with the data, what to look at. This is changing. So what's yeah. your thoughts on that? So we can get into a long moral and ethical discussion about this John, but you know as as a technology guy right? we got three uh, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> got three minutes. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. There's some privacy um, issues, I, of course. I, but I, I mean, think the capability is there, right? I, I think the thing that will change and change rapidly over the next, uh, you know, probably few months uh, at, at the rate we're going in is, is what I would call the uh, the breaks and the variability in that. You know, the, the capability is there, uh, but you know, just like any road, yeah. uh, there are parts where it's a little rough or it's not complete. Yeah. I think that completeness is, is is really kind of what we're driving for as well, right? Which is, and again, you know, taking moral and ethical things out of the equation, what we're really looking for is, how do we ensure that, you know, some of the things that we've been doing uh, around things like sensing and monitoring, which is a part of IT, it's not just IT anymore. It's 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 a, a complete supply chain ecosystem end to end, yeah. right? It's from the device you wear, 
to how it then communicates to a device you have in your bag, to then how it communicates to your service and so forth. So, you know, our focus has, has really been, again, and, and I see where, where we can add a lot of value from the HP perspective is, uh, you know, from instrumentation to the monitoring to the correlation to the analytic piece, um, we're one of the few around that kind of has elements of that, right, in, 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 in its totality. And uh, not to say that it's perfect, but what it does give us, I think, is an appreciation and a vision for you know, where the breaks might happen and, and how do we smooth out the road and how do we complete that last mile and so forth, so. Well, I bring it up because yeah. it's certainly provocative, yeah. uh, intoxicating at some levels to so think sure. about the moral and, 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 and business aspects yeah. of that data. Maybe we could, that's a whole other segment of itself. That's a whole day yeah, show. You can get we another, can do a whole you, innovation. You can get another, you can get we another. Can do, we can do a whole day <laughs> cube on just that concept. Yeah. But it is something that kind of telegraphs what's coming sure. from a management perspective and from technology. So, yeah. I mean, I want to get your thoughts. Appreciate it. Casey yeah. um, Choi, thank you for joining us on theCUBE. Thank you guys, um, appreciate it. We are here live at HP Discover. In fact, if you're interested in that all flash data center we just talked about, there's actually a crowd chat happening right now with all the influencers with the new executive, Manish Goyal, on crowdchat.net slash all flash or go to hpdiscover.socialhour, engagements site and hub for your experience. Keynotes and chats are there as well. It's theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>